Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you for spending a little time with me. This is uh, Sunday, November 25th, and it is um, the last day of um, Thanksgiving weekend here in the United States. And uh, yeah, I'm going to talk to you today about knitting. I have some FOs and I have, well, I have an FO. I have another one that I, is not here. Um, which I'll get into in a little bit. So yes, thank you for sharing some time with me today and I um, hope you enjoy today's podcast. I So my finished object, I'm wearing it, it is um, the Elton Cardigan by Hohi Locatelli. Um, this is the pattern and I she's wearing the medium, I think, the size medium. I had a, a a lot of questions online about this uh, about about the sweater, not uh, about the pattern, about what size I made, and about the yarn that I that I picked. A lot of questions about the yarn. So um, let me go through it one by one. So my just for your own um, reference, I did a size small. Uh, Hohe did a size medium. I'm pretty sure I'm a bigger bust than she is, um, but the one that I did is a 50 inch bust and my bust measures about 39, 38 and a half, 39, sometimes 39 and a half, just depending, you know. So you can see how much ease I have in there um, with this size on my body frame. I'll um, put, put a picture of myself that I had I posted it on Instagram. I'll post it here so that you can see the whole effect. Um, it is a, a gradient, a blue gradient, all natural indigo dyed. Um, the wool is by Verbit. Let me show you the yarn, the beautiful, beautiful yarn. So Verbit, since I, I realized since I got questions about it, I probably wasn't doing such a great job explaining it. So this is the brand. Um, they are a Norwegian-based shop and yarn dyer. Um, the wool is Vanel Visling. I'm sure I'm butchering that, but who knows? 100% <laughs> Norwegian wool. So it was um, sourced in Norway as well as dyed in Norway. Um, it is a fingering weight wool. It is a, It appears to me to be a two-ply. And I bought a gradient pack. Pack, so you can see it says gradient there. I'm pretty sure that's the word for blue. Not sure. Well, actually, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe that's the word for blue. Um, so it came as a four pack. The yarn came as a four pack. And this is what I have left. So it was, uh, each skein was, each blue was 50 grams. So I think I had close to 800 yards of um, between all four. I think I have the most of this um, this one right here left. This this dark blue I I have the least. Yeah, I have the least of the dark blue, which makes sense because there's this um, you're knitting a lot more when you start this pattern you start up here it's a top down so you're knitting a lot more of that dark blue and then i used the dark blue for the neck trim and then what i did was i did a gradient um front band trim too which i think you can see there where the the color changes on it um i bought the mohair from them as well from verbit as well actually this is what i have left of that the mohair was also a gradient but i don't think it was as um, broad a gradient as, as this. It wasn't as uh, nuanced as this, I would say. It seemed more like it was about two colors. This is the lightest color that I have left. And you can see that lightest color of mohair is probably the, um, probably matches that second to darkest um, wool that I have left. So this is a mohair silk, kid, silk, kid mohair silk blend, typical like 70 to 30, I think it might be like 72 to 28 from Verbit. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, uh, that's the word for blue. I'm pretty sure. Lil LeBron. Um, come on, focus there. Anyway, um, I bought two balls of the mohair 
And what I, from what I understood from what I, I found out about the yarn from watching Ellie of Skandir Nitzwinch on her last trip to Norway, where she had stopped by Verbit and had um, came home with the uh, wool blue gradient set that I have here, as well as the uh, gradient in the skein mohair. Um, and from what I understand with the mohair, the way that it's dyed, it's dyed as, um, as a natural gradient, like it kind of... I don't know how she does it, but it's gradient in the skein, but I think it's just left in the indigo dye to, to soak, something along those lines. So, um, so yeah, I, after seeing it on, on Skein Your Knits podcast, I, um, I went, I basically stocked the store, the Verbit online store <laughs> to see if, until both the mohair and the wool were were posted. The mohair was there for I, I think there actually might be mohair now in there in her shop. Her the online shop is completely in Norwegian, so I just kind of winged it. I just kind of you know ah, okay that word looks like shop. <laughs> That's yarn because garn is the word for yarn in Norwegian, and I just muddled my way through using um, Google Translate when I needed to. Um, I wasn't sure exactly how many yards of wool I was getting. I just knew I was getting one gradient four pack and it, it fortuitously ended up being just enough for the Elton cardigan. Um, I, I have extra so if anybody, if, if you're thinking about following in my footsteps and making the same cardigan um, in the gradient blue pack, um, you could probably go up a size or two and still be okay um, yardage wise just given given uh, the extra I have. And the mohair, no, actually, I think there's enough mohair to probably do another another size up at least, at least one size up, if not two. Um, but I, anyway, that's my yarn story. I love this cardigan. I haven't worn it yet. It, um, it did grow, so if you're concerned about the length and stuff, um, on the blocking mat, it grew a lot. It was barely hitting the top of my, the waistband of my jeans, before I blocked it, after I blocked it, I had a good couple inches um, uh, growth that happened. <laughs> huh. Oh, podcasting. So, yeah, and, and the wool just really bloomed in the in the blocking, which I liked a lot, and the sleeves also grew. So. Um, when I before I blocked it, I think my sleeves were hitting about my wrist bone, and now you can see they're they're down this low. And I can't wait to wear it this week, coming up when because this week I return to work tomorrow. I've been off for a week. It's been really really awesome. I did a lot of cooking and a lot of cleaning and a lot of cleaning and a lot of cooking, and a lot of knitting. Um, not as much knitting as I as I wanted, but but a significant amount. I was able to finish this. Um, the other thing that I finished and packaged and shipped off was my, um, I'll put, put a picture in here, the sweater that I designed for Long Island Yarn and Farm. So that went off to, um, to the, her, to Tabitha of Long Island Yarn and Farm for her to put in her own shop um, and uh, sh bring to shows and all of that. I'm super happy with the way it came out. It just amazing. I love the design. I mean, I love the way the color work came out on the bottom. It looks really, really good. I'm looking forward to making one for myself. I'm probably going to use this pattern for my uh, for the Clinton Hill knit along that Christy Glass is running January through April of 2019. So I think it's going to look really awesome um, in that yarn because that sweater, I allowed for the drapeability of the alpaca blends that um, Tabitha sells. So I think I'll get similar drape with the cashmere. So yeah, that's that's my thought anyway. And I think I'm going to do it in black and white because I told you a couple episodes ago when I got the making magazine black and white that I'd been really, really obsessed with black and white. So it is, uh, it is kitty cat shenanigans time because I'm podcasting so um apologies if you hear <laughs> some strange little animal noises in the background because he is I don't know I start talking to the camera and he goes crazy who knows why so, um, anyway, I have more information. I'll post in the in my show notes the episodes where I went over the Long Island Yarn and Farm um, 
cardigan. If you want to know more about it, more about the yarns and stuff, you can also find it on my project page. So I have a lot of info on there on my project page about it. And uh, yeah, scratching. Stop it, Rue. Stop. Um, and so get, moving on to my whips, I want to first talk about the one that Martha's wearing. So this is a uh, Christmas inspired sweater i never i have not made a christmas sweater in probably since i left the industry and we made we made a crap ton of christmas sweaters every year we would do them in july actually uh, for for them to be sale for sale in november and december and uh that was at the height of the kitschy christmas sweater phase in the in the late 80s early 90s anyway this is my first sweater since then Christmas sweater, Christmas sweater. Um, and I am really loving it. It is coming along very, very nicely. Let me tell you about the pattern and about the yarn. Um, this is a pattern, a fairly new pattern. I think it was just published for Shetland Wool Week, which happened in November. It is called Tree Oak. And it was designed as a two color um, sweater and I switched it to three color. So that I can get that Christmas effect. It is by a 16-year-old. Um, this is designed by a 16-year-old named Alyssa Malcolmson. Um, I got the pattern on Ravelry. It was, I, I think it was blown out into multiple sizes for Shetland Wool Week, and it was included somehow in a pamphlet um, by sh the Shetland Wool Week organizers. By the way, like I want to go to that. That's on my bucket list, Shetland Wool Week. Um, so she's she's 16 she's born and raised in shetland um and you can buy the pattern on ravelry um in one size so it she says it fits a 42 to 45 inch um around the chest so for me that's about four to five inches of ease so i figured um I just make the size that she has without making any adjustments. Um, in order for me to get gauge, I did go up a, a needle size. I am knitting on US size three, which is uh, 3.25 millimeter. And she she wrote the pattern for a three millimeter or a US um, two and a half. So yeah, so I am, I joined, I jumped in on, it won't be no surprise to anyone, but Christy Glass is doing a knit along for Christmas sweaters and I decided that if I could find a pattern I liked and I could use yarn that I already had on hand without having to buy new yarn I would join and yeah it's been a really really pleasurable knit along um I'm going to talk, talk to you about the yarn and then I'll show you the sweater up close the gray is um by Amy Edwards of Stranded Dye Works and it's her first frost colorway on her BFL base and I bought this last year when she first um, started to make the BFL nylon um, base. She first started to offer it and yeah it's first frost. There we go. Hello. I love how it focuses on my hand and not my anyway. Ah, technical difficulties. <laughs> the lovely jewel tones that you're seeing of the trees. This is a lavender loon color. It's called Holly Drama, which I also bought last year. I think I bought it right around this time of year last year. I see I see how you, how it's going to be today, camera. It's going to be one of those I don't feel like focusing up close kind of days. Um, but you get the gist. This is a highly variegated yarn. I wasn't sure how it was going to work. I wasn't sure if it was going to really give me the um, stitch definition that I that I I felt like I should have for this sweater. So it's lavender loon. Um, it is on her seventy five twenty five uh, sock base. Um, and I'm actually quite pleased with it. I think it came out fine. I. Um, and doing the body out of a one-of-a-kind uh, twisted fitch um, yarn and this surprisingly grayed green knits up is knitting up a lot brighter than I anticipated I mean maybe it's the compact of a size 3 um, this is a non superwash 100% merino fingering weight um, yarn and I have two skeins of it which should be plenty to do this sweater 
I'm trying to decide what to do for the um, for the sleeves. I was thinking I might do some sort of like striped sleeve variegation, like, you know, just mixing up the colors and doing stripey sleeves because I have plenty of this yarn left. At the very least, I'm gonna do some color work around the, um, the bottom, just above the bottom rib and also at the, either, you know, right above the cuff or maybe do a stripe around the cuff. I don't know. And I'm gonna bring these colors back a little bit, at least, if not a full striped sleeve. I don't know, I'm trying to figure that out. I think I'm gonna knit the whole body and then decide what I'm gonna do with the sleeves. So I'll get, I'll get pretty far down on the body. Let me show you this up close because it's, it's very pretty. Um, I did make a couple mods on the pattern too, which I detailed on my pattern page, on my project page on Ravelry. I, I did some short row shaping besides doing the three colors, but there we go. Look at that. Isn't that so pretty? I am so pleased with it. I mean, there are, there are some soft pastel -y versions of, you know, or stretches of that, of the yarn that I chose. But by and large, like, it's pretty nice. Look at that. Yeah. The pattern is also written for dots to be in the body of the sweater. I decided not to do that because I'm getting a lot of variation um, in, in this sweater. I am alternating skeins um, of the main color, which is why you see the, the stripey, stripiness. I'm doing the helico method of alternating skeins, which is pretty interesting. I'll show you the back so you can see how it works. Um, basically what you do is you stop short every three yards. I mean, every three, three stitches before the last row. See the line of stitches? And then you pick up the other strand. So each time you're moving the place you're switching, the yarn, um, skein three stitches over over by three stitches and on the front side what happens is you don't see you don't get a seam it's it's virtually seamless so you don't see any place where those transitions happened so that's pretty cool I do I do really like that um I am almost ready to split for the for the sleeves on this yoke I have about another half inch or so maybe three quarters of an inch to go but on uh, three to five millimeter in fingering weight, that is uh, probably about six rows, and um, I'm over 400 stitches in the round right now, so it's slow going. Um, I think last night I sat and binge watched um, Sabrina, the new Sabrina on Netflix. It's so good, I love it. Um, I binge watched that, and I think in that time I knit maybe that much, maybe like an inch and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Been to watch like five episodes, so it's like five hours. Yeah, slow going. Once I split for sleeves, though, it'll go faster. Um, I think I was looking ahead at her pattern, and I think I'm going to be um, changing the sleeve decreases a little bit because it's a lot of stitches for the sleeve, and I think it might be a bigger, baggier sleeve than I like on my sweaters so so yeah that is my plan um and yeah i i don't know i don't know if i'm going to finish this for christmas in time for christmas at all but we do have an extra week um someone else was saying on their podcast there's an extra week of um between an extra weekend between Christmas and Thanksgiving this year. So who knows? And I am off actually. I have um, from December 14th to the end of the year, I'm off of work. So maybe, maybe, maybe I'll get it done. Who knows? I don't know exactly what I'm going to be doing in that time. With my time off, I have no plans to travel other than just short um, trips that would, you know, yeah. Okay, moving on. Moving on with my other whips, my other works in progress. I am knitting the, there we go. This gets into some of my Christmas knitting. That's not happening as quickly as I thought it should. Um, I am doing the Wavy Legs Hat by Jody Brown, Mrs. Brown Bags of the Grocery Girls. And I am knitting it in Sugar Skull by Stitch Together Studio. 
it's looking really dull on screen. Like it's not looking nearly as it's, there's there's a, do you know the color of glow in the dark green? Like bef when you're looking at something that is plastic and glows in the dark, it has that sort of like weird yellowy green. So that's the dominant color in this skein. It is highly speckled as you can see. It's got pinks and blues and lots of black speckles, which I adore. Um, but that green is getting washed out on screen. So you're not really seeing the, that eerie day glowy green, not day glow, glow in the dark green. It's getting, it looks, it's reading as like kind of a cream color on, on uh, screen, but if, where you're seeing cream, if you just kind of imagine this, that green, maybe, maybe if I put it close, there you go. You can see it a little bit there. You see the, that pale Cream is actually green, Dago green, <laughs> or glow in the dark green. Why do I keep saying Dago? Um, so yeah, I, I made, did one mod, I just made my ribbing a little bit longer than what she suggests. I, I really wanted, um, I like to fold my rim. I know a lot of people don't fold rims. I like folded rim. I like to be able to do a slouchy look or do a folded rim. Um, over my ears. My ears get really cold and I do like my campus is super windy So I I like to do a lot of um, I mean I do a lot of walking on campus anyway So I, if it's windy, I want an extra layer over my ears So yeah, I Started this about a week ago. Um, it's been I had just haven't been giving it a lot of love It's I'm I actually am gonna try to finish this today. I read um, a couple people, when I said I was knitting it, they told me that I would be able to, um, I should be able to finish it in a day or two if I worked on it consistently. And I just haven't been consistently knitting on it. I've been working on that and I was finishing this um, in that time period that I, um, you know. So I do want to finish this because I have a couple plan. I have a plan to make two more hats. I don't know if I'm going to use the same pattern, but I'm, I am for one of them at least. I have four Christmas gifts. So um, I do want to get going on this. Um, I also have some mitts in mind for Christmas presents and yeah, I really need to move. Gotta move. So I'm not sure how much um, selfish knitting I'll be doing in the neck over the next month, but it should be a lot of Christmas, Christmas knitting. Um, I have a couple other whips. I have kind of an action-packed episode today. <laughs> well, I'm doing okay. I, I also have a lot of new acquisitions. Oh, I forgot I wanted to share this with you. This goes, this is the pom-pom that I got um, to go with, the, with this yarn. This was a hat kit that I showed a couple weeks ago on, um, on, on a couple episodes ago, I talked about the, the entire kit. So this, my, my hat, this hat is for me, um, and it will have a very brilliantly colored matching pom-pom. So excited about that. Yeah, I'm gonna need that hat soon, so I better, better move. Um, a new, another new cast on I have, which I'm super excited about. I am making the, this is one of my own patterns. This is something I've been wanting to do for about a year. This, this cardigan is called Fun Mary's Driving Cardigan. I designed it last year. It ha I don't know if you can see, but it has pockets right there. And it's, it's um, belted and it has this really cool um, back waist detail. Um, there's no shaping aside from that back waist detail. I made the original uh, sample in a superwash merino 100% um, Pullworth yarn from Woolen Homestead in Indie Dyer in uh, in the United States. I think she's in she's up, she's in the upper north part of the United States. I want to say Minnesota, but I might be wrong. Um, anyway, I have cast on Fun Mary using the um, Kingston yarn from Jill Draper Make Stuff. So I'm really excited about it. I wanted to, since I've made the first sample in a superwash, I wanted to try a um, toothy wooly wool. And when I purchased um, the Kingston yarn at um, 
New York Sheep and Wool. It, it's a new yarn. It's 100% Targi wool. And Targi is a sheep that is a crossbreed of Rambouillet and Columbia, I want to say. Columbia sheep. Um, but it's really, really squishy, soft, gorgeous, gorgeous yarn. Um, and Jill, when she, when she dyes her yarn, she only uses red, blue, and yellow dyes. And that's how she, she mixes those dyes those colored dyes to get the color. So you can see I've got flecks of all three of those primary colors running through this yarn. It's so pretty and it's so soft and I'm so excited about this sweater. So I have been um, working a little bit on it. Um, I decided for this one, I wanted big buttons on it instead of doing a belt. So, which is probably gonna work in my favor because I'm a little, sh I'm short a little bit of yardage. Um, for the size that I'm making. I had to go down a needle size and um, down a size in the sweater to get the right um, dimensions for me. I think, I don't, yeah, I don't, I, that surprised me because I would have thought the superwash yarn would have been a little thinner um, than this. This is, this is a DK weight, but I guess, I don't know. You know, that's why you swatch and all of that. And it's still like, it seems really, really big to me. Sorry, it's a little tangled, but it just, that seems like a lot of roundness. But um, these are, there is a pretty large front, about a two and a half inch um, over, overlap of the front trim. And the front trim is a twisted rib. If you see right there, it's really pretty. Cat hair. Um, I really, really love it. I love that detail in it. And the bottom is a two by one. I'm working on the bottom right now. It's a bottom up knit. So it's a two by one. Um, yeah, pattern is the, it's an 18 page pattern. It's ridiculous. It's it's because I, I took the time to spell everything out. Um, a more experienced knitter will be able to just like skim. <laughs> Um, because almost always you're knitting the knit and purling the pearls on the wrong side. That's the right side that you're doing stuff on. But the trimming, you do have um, both right and wrong side to do. But it's only 20 stitches of the front and on the uh, across the front until you get around to the back. So yeah, I can't wait. I think this will be like probably a post Christmas finished object because I I don't see myself. Um, having the time, though it is a DK weight, so it may knit up fast. And I am doing a size smaller than I normally do. Um, so who knows, maybe it'll maybe it'll get ready, get done, I don't know. Between this though, and some of the Christmas things that I have planned, I, I don't know how, I don't know how much love that's gonna get though. I was just so happy to be able to cast on some of the yarn that I got from Rhinebeck. So that was, that was really exciting. The last finished object, or not finished object, work in progress. <laughs> that got a little attention and this was purely because i shouldn't say this i really need to finish this piece um it was but it was mostly because i ran out of having i ran out of mindless things to knit and i always like to take something that i consider mindless to my office so um i did end up grabbing this um long languishing work in progress i am working on the mama luca which is by Maya Carlson, and it is basically um, a Scandinavian-inspired um, booty shorts, I guess is what I call them, but you could call them underwear. I guess it could be underwear, old, old school underwear. So um, yeah, I, I got a little, I made a little progress on it because it's been, um, I think the last time I showed this was, I don't know, sometime in the summer, and I think I was only about to there, but I did, so I did get, I have made some progress. I put a few rows in um, on it. I think I'm done, I am done with all the increases on it, and now I'm just um, knitting the, getting the, the length of it, so I think you can see better, there's a little picture in here. Yeah, right there. And it's a free pattern, so I'm not giving anything away by holding it up, but I will I will do my best to. So I I'm, I'm probably about right there. So I'm probably like 70% done. Um I have I have designs on on the wool. 
and the extra wool. I have an idea. I have a plan for what I want to do with the extra wool from this. So I am um, finding that I am more motivated to uh, finish this. Plus, it's it's cold, and I want them. I want to wear them. So I have quite a bit. I have besides this wool, I have another full skein. So I am hoping that I can finish the pattern with this wool and. Um, use that full skein for uh, yet another future um, sweater that I'll be I'll be working on down the road. Uh, oh, I didn't tell you about the yarn. The yarn is really nice. It's so beautiful. Do I have the yikes? I don't. Okay. Wait. I'm. Nope. I can't reach it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no. So the yarn is Plucky Knitters um, Primo Fingering, which Primo is, I believe it's a, I'll put it on screen if I'm wrong, but I believe it's a 801010 um, Merino Cashmere Nylon. It's so soft. Mm, it's going to be so nice. It's not going to be itchy at all. Um, I had, on my podcast in the past, like in the summer when I was working on this more consistently, this is, um, this waistband folds down. I had a couple people say to me, you know, if you're going to wear it under skirts, you probably don't want that double layer. And they're 100% right. I, I think if I were to make this again, I would just do a shorter um, waistband. I don't really think that folded waistband is... I mean, it's a cute detail if you were just going to wear this over tights, but I'm, I'm those years of wearing this over tights are way beyond me, way behind me. <laughs> so a younger woman might feel comfortable doing that. Like, I... I saw like pictures um, on Ravelry. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of people have made this pattern. Um, and you can see how the girls have styled it. There's some really cute, cute mods um, for this. But I really just wanted to do follow the pattern, be true to the pattern for my first shot. Um, I figured I would make another pair. Um, I don't know how quickly though. The, the needles are really, really small. I don't remember what they are. Let me see if it says on the pattern. I'm sure it does. Um, I probably, I usually write my mods on the pattern. Uh, yeah, 2.5 millimeter. So slow going. Um, very slow going. Oh, this is sport weight. Ah, Primo. This is Primo Sport from Plucky Knitters. Um, not the fingering weight. Good to know. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's the end of my, my works in progress, the things that I made progress on. And I, I do have a couple other languishing whips that, um, my plan is always like every year I take my languishing whips and that boxing day week, um, between Christmas and New Year's, I usually crank through cause it's a lot of just sitting around talking to family and visiting and relaxing and eating. Um, so I usually spend time pushing myself to finish up languishing whips so that maybe maybe boxing week knitting sitting right there who knows we'll see okay i have some new acquisitions that i want to share with you i'm going to start with what i got first because um, i i actually have quite a, quite a few things so I purchased um, from Anthropology uh, a couple patches to put on my um, project bag. So I was looking for a nice white patch for um, my white fringe field bag. Um, this one is housing my um, uh, Fun Mary driving cardigan in the Kingston wool from Jill Draper. So I think I'm gonna put this moon patch on this bag, so that's the plan. And I also got these three patches from Anthropology as well. There, she's got, they have them, she, they, it's a corporation, Shannon. <laughs> they have it set up like their cards, so you could, I guess, gift this to someone, but I just like that this is an I love you. So I don't know which project bag these are going on, but I, yeah, they're cute. I may not do them vertical, I may do them horizontal instead. Um, but just really liked those and I will figure out I may because I I have in my on my other project bags like this one um, sewn on patches that so this is my gray field fringe bag that's a dark fairy patch that I got on Etsy um, so sometimes I have put patches on the back as well so I may end up putting those I love you on another on the back or maybe I'll save it for another future field fringe bag yeah not sure all right, 
I made a trip to upstate New York to see my mom, who's not doing so well. She's um, so she's doing well enough, but she's been um, she's had some health health, health issues and has um, had a a little you know setback where she's had to go into rehab to get herself back into um, you know t repaired. <laughs> I'm trying not to give too much away, um, but I, on my way home, I made a little side trip to to break up my long drive to um, Rhinebeck, and I stopped at the Knitting Garage um, in Rhinebeck. A Knitting Garage is a tiny little room in the back of a, a five and dime store in the back of AJ Stickler Five and Dime, and I made some yarn purchases. I'm going to share with you right now. They have um, a mixture of, um, they have a lot of Cascade there and they have a lot of indie dyed yarn, local indie dyed yarn uh, dyers. And uh, I, I guess whatever the owner feels like or is interested in or whatever. Um, so I had Christmas knitting in mind and I it took me like three circles around the store to find this once upon a corgi uh like my cold dead heart um, i bought a dk weight this is non superwash pullworth and silk blend um, and i thought it would make a gorgeous it feels so soft mm. i thought it would make a nice hat for someone <laughs> for part of my gift knitting so i i grabbed that skein i also they had a lot of spin cycle yarn, and I had bought spin cycle yarn at um, uh, New York Sheep and Wool. I did not pick up any of their new Dream State yarn, so I I was interested in maybe picking up that. That is what I got, right? How come it? Oh yes, it says it right there, Dream State. So I got this one color just to use as color work in something, and I think I just love the the. You're not even seeing the brightness of the yellow there. I just really, really loved um, this colorway. And I think it will be really pretty in on a solid gray um, color work. So I may, this may also end up being gift knitting. I'm either going to make it as color work in a hat or I don't know, maybe, maybe a cowl. Not really sure um, what I'm gonna do. I just really wanted to just wanted a couple like pick-me-ups and then last I picked up this is new to me this is a German um, yarn called Chapelle Chapelle now you're you're seeing exactly what I'm seeing made in Germany it's similar to spin cycle in the way that it's constructed and I bought two skeins of related yarns not really sure what i'm going to do with them but they were they were relatively inexpensive um it is a fingering weight 100 percent wool virgin wool it does not say that it's super wash so that's that's interesting and cool um merino wool from patagonia and uh, yeah not really sure what I'm gonna do with them. This one's really pretty. I like the blues and greens in it with the purple. And this is like a washed out version of the same color. Um, so they, they could go together in a gradient. Anyway, I just, these are for stash. Not really, no plans, no plans at all. So yeah, that was my little side trip to the knitting garage. And I have, I really wanted to, since before even, like since probably the beginning of this year or springish, I really, I made a conscious decision to try not to buy just to contribute to my stash. I wanted to make purposeful and intentful purchases. So either buying with, buying yarn that um, is specific to an occasion or specific to a project. So if it like in that case, that was um, these in the cases of these, these are like souvenir, <laughs> souvenir yarns that to just commemorate my um, stopping at Knitting Garage because I probably won't stop there again, you know, till till the fall or something. Who knows? Who knows the next time I'll be driving through there. So 
with that in mind, I, um, keeping those, <laughs> that in mind, I did purchase, I did make a couple purchases and, um, this one purchase that I'm about to show you is something that was really frivolous, just a really, fr like, because it didn't hit those, either of those boxes. It wasn't a special occasion to buy the yarn like it's a special event, special occasion, nor was it a um, yarn that I have any any intentional purpose except that it was pretty, I liked it. I could buy sweaters quantity, so. And if you follow me on Instagram, you will, you will have seen this because I was so excited when I got it. Um, I bought myself some more little gray sheep um, this time I bought the Stein wool, um, fine wool sock. I bought a sweater's quantity, so I have a third skein of um, the color, the weather's up. And I just loved the tonalness. It actually kind of goes with those other ones that I just showed you of this color. It's just so pretty. That seafoam green with the pale heather. It's just, it's, it, says Scotland to me. I, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I've never been, but it just, I just imagine it as like the, the heathers, the colors that you would see in Scotland. So three skeins of this should be enough to make me a colorwork sweater. And in that, along that line, I also bought a mini skein kit that sorry about the shine on the plastic, that I think will work nicely with this color. Yeah. I don't know, I've got a swatch. These may end up going for something else. Maybe I'll use them in some, I almost said socks. You guys know I don't knit socks. So I'm not gonna go down a sock rabbit hole again because that's a really, really, really long, long. It'll take me all year to make socks. Um, but I, nevertheless, I have, I have had a sock request from someone who's very dear to me. So I may, I may end up making another pair of socks at some point next year, not before Christmas. Um, so yeah, I, <sighs> yeah, there's my three skeins. Not sure what color work this will be. This will be something that I will knit in the new year. Um, I'll, I'll figure it out. There are so many beautiful color work patterns out there. And uh, some that would just be amazing in those colors and in that yarn. So, okay. My last purchase, my last stash acquisition it was an occasion um, purchase. I bought a sweaters quantity from Amy of Stranded Dye Works of her DK weight. 100% uh, Superwash Merino Aran in the Midnight Sun colorway, which is this pale grayed lavender. It's just gorgeous. Um, so I have six skeins of this color and I didn't have any idea what I was gonna make with it until this morning when I was looking on Ravelry and Instagram and I saw that the Winterfell cardigan I don't remember the designer's name, but I'll pop it here on screen. The Winterfell cardigan um, has been designed now for Aaron Waite. So I was like, ooh, how fortuitous. So I quickly queued it. Um, I don't have any intention of casting this on anytime soon, but I do like to have a plan um, because I have so many, I have, I have one, two, I have two or three other sweater weight, three, maybe four sweater quantities of yarn that I have no plan for. So it's nice to have, I don't want yet another batch of um, yarn that I have no plan for. I'm trying again, just because I'm trying to do purposeful knitting. Though, um, I, oh, and I forgot to say a little shout out, because I know I do appreciate when other um, podcasters shout me out. So I like to try, I want to try to shout out. Um, the uh, sweater I did the, I mean the hat that I'm making, that is for the Blame Dunder Knit cowl. Um, so Caroline of uh, Knitting the Knitting Vicariously podcast, she um, 
is doing a Blame Dundernick Cal, which basically is uh, cast on whatever you feel like, whatever you want. Put a, Don't let your other whips stop you or don't let your other obligations stop you. Just cast on whatever you have a dying desire <laughs> or a strong desire to just cast on and then blame her for it. She's there to shoulder the blame. So she she talks all about it in her podcast. So, um, But that's it in a nutshell. So that's actually why I cast this on, just because I cast it on on the day that she her that um, blame Dundernit's uh, Cal began. Dundernit, sorry, Dundernit um, Cal began. Um, I also just wanted to say, like my own, I'm blaming her for this as well. So she, when I, not this last episode, but maybe the episode before that, or the, maybe like her episode six or seven, because she she's brand she's pretty new to the podcasting world. She ex- had reorganized her yarn. It was since she came back from Rhinebeck, and she said what was in she she uh, podcast with behind her is um, a wall of cubbies that have all the yarn organized in it, and she said she said what was in each cubby and I know across the bottom I'm pretty sure she said it was it was all sweater quantities so I entertain myself by (laughs) counting how many sweater quantities she has and I haven't been able to get all the way through all of them before I'm distracted with whatever it is she's showing on screen but she must have well wait so I just said I have four sweater quantities of yarn where I don't have a plan and I probably have another two or three that I've not yet cast on. So I probably have a total of six, maybe seven sweater quantities of yarn that are not currently whips. Okay, that woman has three, maybe four times as many. (laughs) So thank you, Caroline, for taking my guilt away, (laughs) absolving me of my guilt of stashing sweater quantities. (laughs) Ah, yeah. So that is uh, another thing that I blame her for. So to this sort of like, hmm, why not another sweater quantity? (laughs) Anyway, I think that, yeah, my bed is empty over there. So I have nothing else to show you. Um, Thank you again for spending time with me. Please like and subscribe if you are a new viewer. Welcome. And thank you for making making it all the way through my podcast, my latest podcast. And I hope you join me again in a week or two the next time that I podcast with my updates. I imagine I'll have um, things go according to plan. I'll have several hats ready (laughs) to show you. Um, But yeah, who knows? Best, Best laid plans, right? Best laid plans. Anyway, have a wonderful week and enjoy the rest of your knitting time that you have today. And thank you again for spending time with me. Bye.